Hey guys, my name is Doc Jane. Do you love Factorio but wish it was slightly worse in every way? Well, this is the run for you. As is tradition, I'll remove some rocket debris, skip the joke about trees, and start making iron plates. I'll also go fishing, just in case the biters catch me off guard. But early game is probably gonna last a while, so I think we'll be fine. Now for some copper, then we can set up power production. Mostly standard stuff so far. It's pretty easy to avoid using belts in the early game, and I'm avoiding them because I don't want to set up sushi without circuit conditions. I'll handcraft the science we need to unlock automation, then we can start working our way over to green science, then combinators and wire. There, now I don't have to handcraft everything. Except gears. Oops. Researching with one lab is pretty slow, but through the magic of making two of them, there's green science. Oops. And electronics. Now for the circuit network. Making 100 green signs like this takes a while, but it's not too bad. Oops. Well, the biters are here a bit earlier than I was expecting. No idea where they came from, though. Oh well, let's research the submachine gun and go take out that southwest base. Oops. There we go. Now I'll walk around and take out any more nests I see. Oops. Okay, back on track. Oops. Let's expand power production slightly so I don't have to run over here as often. More science. And there's circuit networks. Now I'll research logistics. There we go, and now steel. Next is medium power poles. Oops. We'll start setting up the sushi circuit in a second, but let's finish those power poles first. Okay, let's tear all this down and start working on this sushi. Now, I'm not going to be using the traditional looped belt design because I have an even worse idea in mind. Instead, I'm going to be using a design more akin to a grid cell rail base. 4x4 balancers make up the core of the design, but the real trick is in the corners. The inner two belts of items form a loop around the grid cell, but the outer two belts are split out off into the neighboring cell. And since the lanes are evenly balanced each time they go around a loop, it ensures an even distribution while also accurately simulating Los Angeles traffic. Oh, and four assemblers fit in the center of every cell. Oops. Now it's time to set up the sushi logic. All of the power poles will be connected with red and green wire. The green wire will be connected to all the inserters that add items to the belt, while the red wire will be connected to all the inserters that take items off of the belt. Each inserter will be set to read hand contents in pulse mode. So, each time an inserter picks up an item, a pulse will be sent down its respective wire. Next, we'll make all the items on the red wire negative with this top combinator, and then connect it to the bottom combinator. The bottom combinator will act as our memory cell. It will store everything we put into it until we remove it. To achieve this, we take each signal, do nothing to it, and output each of them again. Then we'll take the green wire and connect the output of the combinator back into its own input, creating a loop. Then we'll connect the green wire from the inserters to the memory cell. Since we also connected the inverted red wire to the memory cell, those negative numbers will subtract from the memory cell each time an item is taken off of the belt. In summary, the green wire will add to the item count, and the red wire will subtract from it. Now let's make a blueprint of the grid cell, then swap in some furnaces. Oops. Now let's get all the raw resources belted over to the sushi. Oh, and let's not forget about the filter inserters for the furnaces. There we go. Now we can plug in the resources and start smelting. Since the belts add to the system, we'll hook them up to the green wire. And since the green wire also contains the current item count, we can set the circuit condition on the belt to only allow a certain amount of each item into the system. There's a slight design flaw with this system though. Items get stuck in the corners if there isn't another cell for them to flow into. But we can just ignore it by filling up the corners with items. And there we go, we're starting to smelt. Now we can add another grid cell right after I get enough resources to build it. And here's the first of many times that I'll mess up the item count. I accidentally used the green wire instead of the red one. I'll pick up all of the items off the belt, and reset the memory cell. Back to work on this assembler cell, I'll place the assemblers and start making more belts. 
This cell is going to make green circuits and gears. Only problem is, I have to increase the limit for ores again, since there's now more dead ends in the sushi. There we go. Oops. By the way, the inserters hooked up to the outputs of the assemblers have conditions on them that limit how many items they can put on the belt. This will make sure we don't end up with a million green circuits in our system. Let's keep expanding. I'll use this filter inserter to pull items that I want off of the belt. Oops. Since our sushi belts have coal on them, we can run up a belt to fuel the steam engines. Hopefully I won't have to say oops anymore. Time for some more smelting. The pollution cloud has gotten pretty big, but we've still got time. Time to set up science. Nothing special for red science, but we do need to set up belts and inserters for green science. After a bit of waiting, we've got science. First up is turrets. Speaking of which, let's set up ammo as well. And there's turrets. Next up is walls. We'll need stone for that. And next is projectile damage. Now that stone's hooked up, I'll expand again to add brick and steel smelting. Then we can set up turret and wall production. So far, this isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Instead of working on projectile damage, let's change gears to steel furnaces. Speaking of changing gears, we're out of them. We need more iron plates, hence the steel furnaces. In the meantime, I'll just add some more stone furnaces. There's steel furnaces. We should probably start working on a wall around the base, but I don't have enough walls right now. Let's go find some oil instead. Thankfully, it's not too far away, just a tad south. I'll take out the base next to it. Looks like I forgot to connect the wires to the new smelters. I'll readjust the iron ore count. Hear that? That's the end of day sound effect. You'll hear it a lot later. Anyways, let's finish that wall. I'll also start working on the south one. Oops. There we go. South wall is done now. Let's keep expanding. This time, the expansion is just to help with congestion. Let's start working towards plastic. Looks like we need more green circuits. I'll expand again. There's engines. Next up is automation 2. And another expansion, because why not? Next is fluid handling. Then I'll build the east wall. And oil processing. To be prepared for blue science, I'll set up engine production. Also, I need to expand again. The belts are getting too full. Actually, before we finish oil processing, let's take a quick detour to set up military science. I have a feeling we might need to abuse flamethrowers. There we go, military science. I'll upgrade some of the more important assemblers to level 2. And there's oil processing. I'll start researching flammables and start hooking up the pump jacks. Now we're making oil, although these biters are a bit too close for comfort. Oh well, we can worry about that later. Let's set up oil refining. Instead of making it from scratch again, I'll just steal it from my Factorissimo run. There we go. I don't have advanced oil processing yet, but the setup will still work with the basic recipe. And there's flamethrowers. I'll start researching tool belt, then finish the oil refinery. There we go. Now we can start working on plastic production. Oh wait, we still need to research plastic. Green science is currently limited by a lack of inserters due to a lack of gears, due to a lack of iron plates, due to a lack of iron ore. I'll modify the iron input to keep adding iron ore until we hit 1,000 iron plates. And I'll also make sure we don't end up with over 1,000 ore in the system. There's plastic. Next up is red circuits. Now I can turn on the chemical plants. Still need more iron plates, but at least it's improving now. Why does this belt stutter? Woob, please fix. Still need more iron. 
Time for more smelters. And after we finish those, red circuits are done. Next up is sulfur. I'll build a spot for the blue science, and then we can research it. Sulfur is easy, just add water. With that done and blue science being researched, we can set up the red circuits and start making the science. If we add together all the signals on the green wire, we can see that we have a nice 6.9 thousand items on the belt. Pretty cool. Although that probably isn't counting stone, because at some point I accidentally unhooked it. Now I have no idea how much is on here. Oh well. Next up is advanced oil processing. Since we'll have light oil soon, now is probably a good time to make some flamethrowers and start designing a wall. One flamethrower would probably work fine, but two is more fun. Building all of the flamethrowers would be a really slow process, so hopefully we can get working on construction robots soon. For now, let's just protect the oil field. While we wait for research, I'll expand steel a bit more, up production of a few things, and upgrade some assemblers. Actually, quick detour. I'll research the Nixie tubes from the, uh, Nixie tube mod. The Nixie tubes are pretty great, just plug them in, set the item, and BAM! You can see how many of that item is on the wire. Advanced oil processing. Now we can finish the oil refinery. And once we finish researching lube, the refinery will be completely done. I'm going to use the Nixie tubes to make a little item display for some of the more common items. Oh, and the science too. Looks like we're low on blue science, which needs more red circuits, which you can see here. I also added displays for copper and iron ore for fun, then accidentally enabled disco mode. Oops. And there's lubricant. Next up is electric engines. My intuition says we need more copper, so let's expand again. And one more time to ease congestion. Okay, now it's time for... Uh, batteries. Batteries are pretty easy, just need sulfuric acid, iron, and copper. Now we can research robotics. I remembered a cool mod I saw that lets you follow items around on belts, so I gave it a try. And you know what? It actually works super well. It's a bit jumpy on splitters, but overall it worked great. Until it crashed. Oh well. Robotics is done. Now we just need to set up the robot frames and electric engines. Slowly but surely, we're making the frames. And after another quick expansion, we can research construction robots. Seven hours in, and we can finally make robots. I'm a little excited. Let's make some, shall we? And I'll finally get tool belt and steel axe out of the way. Roboports are expensive. They might take a while. But they'll take even longer without power. Oops. Let's finally expand power production some more. Speaking of power, we'll need substations later. Now that we're starting to make bots, it's time for the cool part. Chopping down a single tree. And importing the grid design I made in advance. Eight lanes of red belts being mixed by some beautiful 8 to 8 balancers. It might be super expensive, but we're gonna need it. But why do we need it? Well, lucky for you, I haven't told you the best part yet. But we have to build it first, so I'll tell you later. Issue is, we don't have enough red circuits for roboports. Now, I'm doing a sushi run because it's painful, not because I hate myself. So, just to keep a tiny bit of my sanity, I will unfortunately be removing all the biters from the map. I have a feeling we'll be running into performance issues later anyways, so might as well remove them sooner rather than later. Feel free to call me a chicken in the comments. No biters means no walls, so I'll tear them back down. After building a roboport and setting up some passive provider chests, the bots happily get to work creating useless dead ends. Oh well. Speeding up a bit here, I'll place the first roboport for the red belts, expand power again, and then add lights to the blueprint because I totally didn't forget them. There's substations. I'll get started on logistics too, then we can set them up. There we go. I'll start on stack inserters next. After setting up red belts, now we just need to wait. Stack inserters. Next up is landfill. 
Okay, now we just need to wait. Those red belts are going to take their sweet time. Since we don't need to research anything else in the starter base, I'll tear down all of the science. I've also added a storage chest that dumps the items back onto the belt. And since making red belts is super slow, I'll start making them by hand as well. Although we are starting to chew through this iron patch pretty quick. Shoot, I forgot to research electric furnaces before tearing down science. We have enough red and green science packs, so we just need to set blue back up. Instead of sitting around and doing nothing for quite a while, let's sit around and do something. Here's the best part I was saving for later. I'm going to create a giant display to show the status of every item on the belt, and the target amount that we are trying to reach. 200 science per minute. Not a super impressive number by any means, but come on, it's a sushi base. Now for the fun part. I've got to manually set the goal amount for each item by hand in all of these combinators. And I'm also going to handcraft all the Nixie tubes because I've got plenty of time. Okay, after placing all the tubes and plugging them in, now I've just got to start punching in the numbers in descending order. First up is copper wire, with a goal of 54,449. This actually didn't take as long as I thought it would, only about 20 minutes. Now I can tear down the old display and hook up the new one. And after all of that, we still aren't even nearly done with the first set of red belt cells, and we're still researching electric furnaces. Here's two more fun numbers. Our current item count versus the goal item count. We're currently about 4% of the way there. Back to making red belts. But dwindling iron supply forces me to rebuild the mine. Red belts, the reddest of belts. Electric furnaces are done. Let's keep making belts, then I'll expand again to ease congestion. Still need more, so how about some gears? Now we just need a few more underground belts. Eventually we're going to deconstruct the old base, so let's make sure we have enough storage to do that. And since we don't have stack inserters yet, let's just use regular ones. Let's set up smelting in the new base. For iron plates, our target is 33,974, which if you think about it for more than 10 seconds is probably a bit too high for now, so let's tone it down a bit. Don't forget to use filter inserters. I threw some plastic on the belt to make sure the splitters were set up correctly. Then we can set up the side balancers. Next is copper, then steel. After fixing the inserters that I placed backwards, I now get to make the worst decision I have probably ever made in this game. We are going to barrel all of the fluids in the base so we can put them on the sushi belt. This is a terrible idea. Anyways, we'll start researching solar so we can move away from steam power. Then we can build our new mall. Man, sushi makes malls easy. The new base is just going to make red belts for now. Once that's set up, we can move the sushi circuit over here, then start tearing down the old base. Since I don't want to clog the new base with the old items, I'll just leave them in storage for a bit. There we go. No more starter base. Now I'll belt the ores over to the new input and fire it up. Balancers can do weird things to full belts sometimes. I'll start resetting up stuff from the old base, but no science yet. Oh, and fast inserters. Once again, the iron mine is too slow, so I'll rebuild all the mines to optimize for throughput. Almost forgot to finish solar. Accumulators are next, except I don't have enough science, so we'll do it later. Once again, items are getting trapped in the corners. Let's fix that. 
Here I expand for the first time and accidentally reset all of the recipes on these assemblers. Since we're going to sushi all of the fluids, this oil refinery also gets to go bye-bye. More gears, and weirdly enough, we apparently only need 772 in the system for 200 signs per minute. That seems very low. The belts are full already. We need to finish this expansion. Using this chest, I'll feed the extra yellow belts into the system to hopefully give red belt production a little boost. Here I finally realized that I accidentally overwrote all of the recipes. Slightly annoying, but easy to fix. With the extra room, Green Circuits gets its own cell now. But man, the belts are still congested. We need to expand again. Oops. Let's start making some solar panels, shall we? Luckily, they're not too expensive. On the belt side of things, we need more gears and iron plates. And with our iron mine being basically dry at this point, let's get started on this other patch. We're out of regular red belts, so I'll run a line of undergrounds instead. But that's still not enough iron, and we somehow have a negative brick. Okay, fine. Let's make a dedicated sushi setup just for making red belts. It's pretty easy since everything in the belt is just made from iron. But I forgot to count the iron ore, so I have to rebuild it. Let's keep expanding. I'll build some more iron smelting and make some bricks. Now we need to get started on oil refining, and according to the Hitchhiker's Guide over here, we need about 2,000 barrels of oil. Shouldn't be too hard. Only problem is, there aren't enough empty barrels, and we can't make more due to a lack of steel, and steel is stopped because all of the belts are full. I'll place some landfill over here, and then we can expand again. Back to oil refining, our current setup doesn't fit into a cell, so let's design a new setup. We don't have enough splitters to finish expanding right now, so I'll just do as much as I can. Oops. The refineries are starting to run, but the belts are still way too full. As I start finishing the expansions, it slowly gets better. Still need more splitters, though. Now that we've got more room, I'll increase iron production. Oops. Looks like our coal miners ran out of coal. Let's move them. There we go. Oil refining is running. We'll crack it later. For now, let's keep the ball rolling with another expansion and some more oil refineries. Oops. Now we can crack the oils down to petroleum, then watch a fish get sucked into a pipe. Power ain't looking so hot. Time to build some solar. Since we don't have batteries yet, we can't make accumulators, but at least the panels will help during the day. I expanded iron again, and now we've got about 10,000 plates in the system. <sighs> Woob, please fix. It looks like my wiring is wrong somewhere. We've got negative amounts of light and heavy oil, and the system hasn't even seen petroleum yet. Oh, I forgot to enable read hand contents. Whoops. I'll try to fix the values in the system by hand, but there's no way for me to know if I'm even close. Oh, I can use the production menu and some math. Time for plastic. Super easy to set up. And I'll dump all of the plastic in storage onto the belt for no reason. Next up is red circuits. Somehow, we still don't have enough gears for splitters, even with 10,000 iron plates in the system. And why is light oil negative again? There must be a leak somewhere. Pun intended. I did some experimentation with the sushi circuit, and it turns out that the combinators slow down as they run out of power. This means that since the power has gone out so many times, the item count probably isn't very accurate anymore. I tried to find a way to easily recount the items on the belt, but I don't think it's possible. The item count is probably close enough, so let's just ignore it for now. Okay, let's start working towards making more robots. Electric engines need lube. We'll set that up right after we make some regular engines. I'll sneak lube production into the heavy oil cracking cells. Looks like it's working. I'll set the limit to 200 for now. The refineries have stopped due to a lack of oil. It looks like we aren't barreling it fast enough. So I'll dump more barrels onto the belt. Light oil is still drifting negative pretty quickly, so I'll cave and build some more steam engines.
Construction robots are almost done, just need to set up the robot frames. But for that, we'll need batteries. So rapid fire, here's sulfur, then sulfuric acid, then we'll need to make some more room for the batteries. Slowly but surely, we'll start making robot frames. I'm starting to think there's another leak in the oil system, and sure enough, I find more misconfigured inserters. I'll fix those, then reset the oil counters again. Somehow, we don't have enough copper or iron plates for batteries, even though it says we have 10,000 iron. Well, I guess the count is wrong. I'll reset the iron plate value and slightly bump up copper ore input. The game is really starting to slow down at this point, so I'll build myself a nice little AFK spot. A couple hours later, petroleum has also gone negative. There's definitely still something wrong with the oil setup. Since I still haven't set up science, I'll just handcraft enough of it to finish researching accumulators. More circuit testing shows that the barreling process is thankfully airtight, but low power does make the count trend downwards. So maybe we still don't have enough power? No, that's not it. Looking at the power graphs, we haven't had a dip in over five hours. And after double and triple checking the blueprints again, they look fine to me. So I sent a copy of the save over to my buddy Dr. Katz, and they found a couple issues. Accumulators are done. Let's make some. We've hit the goal of 2,000 oil barrels, but we're still having throughput issues, so I'll raise the limit. Okay, let's finally build some science and set up the labs. Next up on the research list is explosives, then cliff explosives. After some experimenting, blueprint snapping is now working. This'll make expanding so much easier. Expanding this fast killed power. At this point, the item count on the belt is ridiculously far off. I guess we'll have to drain the belts. This might take a while. Oops. Coal patch ran out again. I'll rebuild it yet again. Man, roboports are power heavy. We should probably set up some accumulators. Power is so low during the night that the inserters are having trouble grabbing coal. After several hours, the belts are basically empty, so let's turn the system back on. Crap, forgot to remove the drain. After waiting another hour, we can try that again. Since I don't want to make too many barrels, I'll sift through storage and pull all the old barrels and fluids out. Actually, I'll just wire it up and dump everything back in. I'm going to start focusing on proper ratios now, so I'll tear down all the old science and start rebuilding it at full scale using all of the new room. Also, we should probably start researching purple science. Next up is trains. 200 science per minute isn't too crazy, we only need two cells for red science. Trains. Next is modules. Green science needs three cells, but now we need to expand again to build blue science. Modules. Next up is Productivity Modules, then Purple Science. Looks like we're out of copper. Time for a new mine. Sulfur production isn't getting enough water. It looks like we don't have enough empty barrels. So let's make a bunch more. Purple science is done. Now for low density structure. Whoops, forgot to plug copper in. Okay, let's expand again. And again. Coal is starting to run out again. Let's go for this patch to the northeast. Easy peasy. Let's keep the expansion ball rolling, then we can set up military and blue science. Military needs two cells, and blue needs five. Now for the green science intermediates, belts and inserters. More labs, then we'll start on purple science. Three cells. Rails for purple science, then yellow ammo, red ammo, grenades, and walls for military. Green circuits are going to be a pain for sure. There's low density structure. Next up is blue circuits. 
Actually, I'll take a quick detour for some power armor. This base is getting pretty big, so I'll need some exoskeletons soon. The separate sushi belt belt production isn't quite optimal, so let's redesign it with proper ratios in mind. There we go, should be a bit faster now. Personal solar panels, now I can research belt immunity. Going to be honest with you here, this is probably the first time I have ever used these. Oh, I forgot to plug in coal. Belt immunity is done, I'll do personal batteries next. There we go, I'll make a couple of them. Back to work. Another expansion, finish rail production, then expand again. Since the base is getting pretty big, let's research some robot worker speed. I want to build more solar, but I don't feel like redesigning the solar panels again, so I'll just yoink the blueprint from my Crastorio world. I'm going to stop telling you when I expand now, I think you get the point. Turns out the solar panel ratio was wrong in the Crastorio blueprint. Guess I'll have to design a new one after all. Worker robot speed 2. Let's finish blue circuits. That's going to be fun. Well, let's get started. But I forgot to set up electric furnace production, so let's make some bricks. Blue circuits, time for exoskeletons. Iron plate production has stopped. Looks like I forgot to raise the limit. I'll fix that. Copper too. Just do it. Speaking of raising limits, I'm going to raise all of the science to 2000. You can't really tell from the video, but items are starting to get really spaced out. Exoskeletons are done. Next up is some better armor. Maybe I should have made the base with blue belts. Kinda too late now. Power armor. Next up is yellow science, which is pretty quick. Then might as well research blue belts, even if we're not going to use them. Let's place yellow science, then the robot frames for the science. Now let's build the ingredients for the frames. First up is electric engines, then normal engines. I just realized we never finished purple science. Let's set up productivity modules. Man, this base is getting big. I hope YouTube compression doesn't turn it into pixel soup. There's another iron patch near the bottom of the belts, so might as well hook it up. We're making purple science, but it isn't very fast due to a chronic lack of red circuits. So let's start setting up green circuits. We're going to need 14 cells of them. We needed more belts, so I'll double production. There's a lot of copper wire on the belts now. The whole base is turning orange. A couple hours later, looks like we're waiting on splitters and undergrounds. A couple more hours later, we're almost done, but I'll just connect the expansion now. We're going to need a lot more room. Like, a lot, a lot. So I'll start filling in the middle, too. There is a nice 69,000 belts in the base now. This base is huge. Oops. I expanded too quickly and killed power, and the combinators plummeted on satisfaction, so now the count is wrong. I'm a little angry. Thankfully, I can just load an autosave. I think we should turn the base into a big rectangle, but before we do that, more solar. After expanding iron and copper smelting again, let's set up the copper wire for green and red circuits. 26 cells. Time to fill in the middle again, slowly this time. I researched beacons, but I don't really end up using them much despite them being in the grid cell blueprint. I'll automate them, but I'm going to remove all the beacons from the base later. I'm not sure why, but there seems to be a slight northwest bias on the belts. 
hopefully it won't be too big of a problem. We're out of stone, and the nearest patch is all the way over here. Great. After running the world's second longest belt, stone is back. The middle section is done, but that northwest bias is definitely a problem. Almost no items are on the right side of the base anymore. Maybe connecting the middle will fix it? I'm not sure, but I think finishing the perimeter of the base should fix the imbalance. Blue belts are done. Can't wait to not use them. Next up is rocket fuel. Time to get started on our final oil production. First up is plastic, 11 cells. Rocket fuel is done. Next is speed modules, efficiency modules, then some lab research speed. I really need exoskeletons now. The base is huge. I'll sneak an assembler in here and hand make some blue circuits. More speed! There we go. One exoskeleton. Back to work on oil, we need 11 cells for light oil cracking and 24 cells for petroleum. I don't have enough room for the oil refineries. I'm still waiting on landfill so I can expand again. I'll handcraft some. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot more. Lab speed is done. Speed module 2's are next, then productivity modules 2, then productivity modules 3. After making more blue circuits, I can make some better power armor. Now I have three exoskeletons. Still waiting on landfill, time to make some more manually. After about half an hour, we can finally place the next row of grid cells. Making landfill inside of the main sushi base is way too slow, so I'll make a little sushi setup for it. Now we just need to fill in most of this lake. Oops, must have hit a load-bearing power pole. After loading an autosave, I need to rebuild the landfill production. With a couple of power bypasses added, let's try that again. And we didn't have enough accumulator charge to finish the night. Crap. Temporarily cancelling all of the construction fixed the problem. Back to landfilling. It looks like I forgot to fix some intersections, so I'll do that now. Let's finish building the oil setup by adding the refineries. 44 cells. We're still way behind on red splitters. We need over a thousand more, and we're currently averaging about one per minute. Not fun. Well, let's start filling in the lake while we wait. After using up all the landfill, I started handcrafting splitters. I'm building only the top sections of the splitters to hopefully get some items flowing back to the right. It seems to work, but it's mostly copper for some reason. Oh well, I'll keep filling in the lake. The oil setups are taking forever to build. Turns out we aren't making any chemical plants or refineries due to a lack of pipes. There's currently only around a thousand pipes in the system, which is double the goal amount, but since the base is so big now, they're super spread out. At this point, crafting stuff has turned into a giant game of chance. Since most of the items are stuck on the left side of the base, we need to reset and drain the entire system again to hopefully even out the spread of items. Okay, that was a complete lie. I have no idea why I decided to reset it here. Past Jaden must have been higher than a kite to think this was a good idea. While I was draining the base, Productivity 3 finished. Next up is Speed Module 3s. While we wait, might as well keep landfilling in the lake. I'd say we're about halfway done. That was the end of Day Chime. Not because I was finished playing for the day, it's now midnight. I kept waiting for the belts to drain until I gave up at 2 a.m. After a quick 20 hour nap, I woke up the same day and decided to plug the system back in. I've decided the item count doesn't really need to be perfect, as long as it's good enough, I'm happy. I'll start dumping everything back on the belt. Let's finish the outer ring just in case items start to bunch up at one end again. All was going well, until we ran out of power again from expanding too quickly. Oops. 
Let's try that again. I love that sound. Still a long ways to go, but it could be worse. We just passed the 100 hour mark. Why did I think 200 signs per minute was a good idea? We made a ton of copper wire before storage could completely drain, so now we've got way too much on the belt. I got bored, so I decided to hook up some speakers to the circuit network and have them play when items are picked up. This led to the invention of the brake coronator. It can also play a combination of jazz and funk, called junk. Checking in on chemical plants and refineries, it looks like we don't have enough steel. We need 34 steel cells, but uh, we ain't got room for that. Guess we'll have to finish the rectangle first. And we're done with landfill. Time for some more copper and iron smelters. We're out of purple science and blah blah blah, we need more steel. I'll sneak 10 cells of it above oil production. Looks like it's time to start building the other side of the loop. The next day, I'm almost done connecting it, but it looks like I miscounted. Our iron patch to the right side of the base finally ran out, so I'll tear that down and move belt production over to the newer mine. Now we don't have enough substations. We need more steel and red circuits, which we haven't even set up at full scale yet. Speed module 3s are done. Now I'll research level 3 assemblers and never use them. Now for rocket control units. Just a few more blueprints to go, and we've finally finished the outer ring. I'll start fixing all of the outer corners, then we can start filling in the middle. And this is where the run goes from bad to worse. I have an i7-8700K, but it just can't keep up with this monstrosity of a base anymore. But performance only dips occasionally right now, so it's not too bad. Iron plates now wrap all the way around the base, but we still need 21 more cells. And some of the intersections over here were built backwards somehow. No idea how that happened. Anyways, filling in the base is coming along nicely, except we need more splitters again. Uh oh, negative oil. I have no idea how it happened, but I'll just make more oil barreling assemblers and ignore the problem. And I'll also raise the empty barrel limit for good measure. Our copper patch is almost dry. Time for a new one. Refineries are starting to run again, but we're already backed up on petroleum because we've hit the target amount of plastic, so that's good news. We still haven't built any more red circuit production, but we're almost done filling in the base, so I think it can wait a bit longer. Actually, never mind. We need more substations and roboports, so I'll put some up here. Never mind the never minding. We actually need more steel. Looks like we've hit the steel limit. Oh well. Looks like I'll just have to wait a little longer. Just to make sure I don't forget, let's make markers for all of the items that are completely finished. Looks like having more barreling assemblers for oil really helped, so let's do the same for water. There we go, now we just need to bridge the gap that separates the current base from the massive expansion. But only after we finish making almost 6,000 splitters. Taking a look at the production menu, we're building about two per minute, and if my math is correct, that will take a very long time. And crafting it is then. I just realized the mall was never plugged in. Great, just great. Now I have no idea how far off the item counts for buildings are. So it's time for yet another reset. But since we don't have to worry about power issues while we're draining the belts, I'll channel my inner once alert and deconstruct every tree in the base. After a few hours, there's still a ton of items on the belt, but I really don't care anymore. Let's just plug everything back in. That is a lot of wood. I forgot that we are building beacons, and they use a ton of power, so it's time to get rid of all of them. We aren't mining iron ore quite fast enough, so we need yet another iron mine. I'll connect it with the world's third longest belt. While I craft some more splitters, I'll set up solid fuel production. 4,000 splitters to go, but we're super low on gears, so I'll handcraft a few. I ended up making around 450 by hand and put them in the chest. 
and then I realized it would probably be faster to just handcraft the rest of them, so I got started on that. Then I got bored and gave up, 3,000 more to go. Looking at the splitter assemblers, we need more gears, and gears need more iron. Now, we've already hit the goal amount of iron, but at this point, I don't care. Let's double it. After updating all 56 cells, we start cranking out that iron faster than a really fast thing. Hopefully that should help. Two and a half thousand splitters left. After changing some of the item ratios for belts, 2,000 to go. Fast forward four hours, 800 to go. Instead of just standing around, I should probably keep working. First I'll build 16 cells of low density structure, then I'll finish steel production. Then I'll do 6 cells of speed modules, 1 cell of solar panels, 4 cells for sulfur, 35 cells for rocket fuel, 3 cells for batteries, and 13 cells for blue circuits. Four hundred splitters to go, but now we have a shortage of fast inserters, which, yet again, is due to a lack of gears. On the bright side, our wood collection is coming along nicely. More waiting, and the splitters are finally done. Still need more inserters, but who cares, we can finally connect the expansion. Belt production got stuck, but here's a fun trick. If you spam the rotate key on a belt, the items on the belt will slowly compress. Works wonders for fixing clogged sushi setups like this. There we go, the rectangle of sushi stupidity is done. Now we can finish placing the rest of the smelters for copper and iron. Then we can place the rest of red circuits. Now we just need to finish the ingredients for yellow science and make the rocket control units for the rocket. Still need to research it though. Blue circuits are stopped due to a lack of sulfuric acid. Oh, there's only a hundred barrels in the entire system. Let's increase that. Our research bottleneck is yellow science, which needs more blue circuits. Oh, the limit is way too low. Let's raise that to a thousand. Six science per minute so far. Not too bad, but still way off target. Low density structure also stopped at around 500. Way too low. I think a thousand should be the new minimum for everything. There's rocket control units. Now for the silo. Oh wait, concrete. I always forget about concrete. Now for the silo. This will probably take a while. Let's set up the rocket control units. 12 cells. There's a ton of extra room. Oh well. Sulfuric acid has gone negative, but I'm sure that's fine. I'll just up the sulfur limit again to speed up production. Except now we don't have enough water. Really? Water? I considered upgrading the entire base to blue belts, and I even went ahead and built production for it. Then I realized that's a horrible and expensive idea, so never mind. The rocket silo is done. Now we have to research the satellite. The silo took about 5 hours, so this will probably take around 10. Now let's make the silo. Looks like I need a lot more concrete. Not enough bricks. No problem, I can hand feed it. And I should probably put productivity in the labs. I'm not sure why I didn't do that earlier. Hey, wait a second, I'm not using barreled water. There we go. Low density structure is low on plastic, and we need more petroleum for that. Looking at the item count, we're backed up on heavy oil, and after a quick internal investigation, it turns out the inserters were disabled by accident. No wonder oil was so slow. Looking at the production graphs, looks like that didn't help either. Turns out petroleum cracking was also broken. After fixing that, petroleum immediately skyrockets to its maximum value. That's definitely a good sign. I'll increase the max limit for all of the fluids to hopefully speed it up even more. There we go. Instead of one big bump for oil production, it now runs around every five minutes. And if you look at consumption on the right, it's trending upwards. Good stuff. And to make sure I never have to deal with it again, I'll desuple the limits of the fluids. Now I'm just worried that we'll run out of empty barrels. So I'll go completely overboard and make way too many of them. Great, now we don't have enough crude oil. After running the world's second longest pipe, we should be good. Except now we need more barrels. 
Apparently 16,000 isn't going to cut it. And now we also need more water barrels. So I'll raise the limit again and make even more empty barrels. By the way, the playtime counter in the top left isn't accurate anymore because of the lag. It counts in-game time, not real time. There, 22,000 barrels. Looks like they're helping. Yellow Science needs more low density structure, but low density structure has already hit its limit. If I disconnect and reconnect the system without draining it, I can effectively double the limits of all the items in the base. But that's a terrible idea, so I'm not doing that. Guess I'll raise the low density structure limit again. How about 5,000? Changing the limits sure does take a while. After grabbing some blue circuits, we've finally got all of the ingredients for the rocket silo. Man, why doesn't it fit evenly? Oh well, I'll just move the substations. Now I just need to make some Productivity 3 modules. Slowly but surely, we'll start making a rocket. And with the magic of editing, there's those Productivity 3 modules. I increased rocket fuel production, but now we need more solid fuel. I'll raise the limit again. Space science is done. Now we can start making satellites for the rocket. Well, I guess I'll start doing mining productivity. Yellow science is still the slowest science, and blah blah blah, we need more barrels again. More steel it is then. I'm getting really tired of manually setting all the circuit conditions in the inserters, so I spent some time designing a setup that will let me put control signals into the green wire without them being counted by the memory cell. After hooking it up to the main network, I can now set up control signals for all the items in the system, which will let me adjust the ratios remotely. I should have done this a while ago. Just to make sure the system works, I'll switch green circuits and copper wire over to the G and W signals respectively. Now, if I turn off this constant combinator, we should see the copper wire start to drop. And when we turn it back on, it rockets back up to the set amount. Looks like it's working. Let's switch over the rest of the items. P is for plastic. B is for barrels. Speaking of which, more barrel assemblers. And the rocket is almost halfway done. S is for steel. Since we can edit signals on the fly now, I can add a turbo button for steel so we can crank out barrels faster than ever. Solid fuel has gone way negative. Something is up. But I think we just need more oil. More empty barrels should fix it. I is for iron. I'm also setting it to 100,000 because I feel like it. C is for copper, 50,000. I'm also raising science again, this time to 10,000. T is for stone. 41,000 barrels in the system, and we still barely ha! have any oil. 41,000 is a lot, but it is stretched out across almost 200,000 belts. After doing some napkin math, I'll set up an alarm to make sure the belts don't get too full. Six science per minute. O is for gears, because they're round. Since we haven't launched a rocket yet, I can't start mining Productivity 4 yet. So I'll research the portable fusion reactor. And since we're done expanding, I'll tear down the red belt production. Solid fuel is still low, and we're starting to run out of plastic too. Time for even more barrels, I guess. More steel! I feel like barrels are going to be my downfall. Looks like we've made a satellite, but since the rocket wasn't done yet, it's probably long gone by now. Fusion reactor is done. I guess we can just start working our way towards the Spidertron. First up is rockets. The rocket is almost done, shouldn't take too much longer. And there's rockets. Next up is military three, then efficiency module twos. 98%. Now for military four. And the rocket is done. Now we just need to wait for another satellite to pass. No, oh, no. Well, we beat the game, but we didn't launch the satellite. After watching back the footage frame by frame, turns out we accidentally launched a single piece of steel into space. Great. Just great. Using filter inserters will prevent any premature launches. Ask your doctor if filter inserters are right for you. After a quick supply chain analysis, looks like we need even more barrels. 50,000 still isn't enough. Fine. How about 100,000? Putting barreled fluids on the belt was such a bad idea. I wish I could go back in time and beat the crap out of myself with a set of jumper cables. Time for even more steel and iron. Or as Randall Munro once said, this quote was taken out of context. 
Military 4 is done, and instead of researching the Spidertron, I'll do Mark II Power Armor. Very cool. Now for Efficiency Module 3s. After grabbing most of the ingredients, I'll handcraft the new Power Armor. Efficiency 3, now for the Spidertron. Notice how plastic production lines up with barrels? Means we still need more. More barrels are more betterer. Remember how the goal was 200 science per minute? That's definitely not going to happen, we're chilling at around 7. So let's aim for 20 science per minute instead. My power armor is finally done, now I just need a fusion reactor for it. I forgot to remove these red belt chests. Check out the bot centipede. Oils are still trending upwards. We'll stop barrel production once it levels off. Eight exoskeletons. Nice. And they're especially nice since the game is now running at about half speed. So, iron smelting is around the perimeter of the base, but all of the ore seems to be getting concentrated around the middle. So, in an attempt to fix that, we can add another iron mine to the top of the base. At this point, I'm really just trying anything I can think of to improve the science output. We haven't even launched a second rocket yet. Okay, that's done. What's next? Looks like we need more batteries for flying robot frames, but it's just out of iron and copper plates, so it should fix itself over time. But I will increase sulfuric acid and sulfur production. U is for sulfur. The new iron mine is finally starting to spin up, and we'll see if that fixes our iron issues. Now I'll give copper the same treatment with another mine over here. Looks good. Iron is getting a bit too high. I forgot to turn off the turbo button. Actually, on second thought, I'll raise the limit to 200,000 just for kicks and giggles. And copper will be raised to 300,000. We've now got over 100,000 barrels in the system. Now let's focus on the rocket silo. We need more rocket control units. E is for speed modules. We've got over 1 million items in the system now. Looking at the belts, they don't look too full, so I'll raise the alarm by a quarter. Here I revive the idea of blue belting the base, and raise gear production to match. I'll turn everything non-blue belt related off, so hopefully I can crank them out at a decent speed. Oil currently only has one filling point, so let's build another one. You know what, how about another one up top? We can use this oil field out here. Time for the world's third longest pipeline. There we go. It looks like oil production has finally stabilized. Now I can drop iron and steel back to normal levels. 200,000 barrels. That's just a little silly. Our new slowest science is military science, and that's due to a complete lack of walls for some reason. I'll raise wall and brick production. R is for red circuits. We're not getting enough coal for plastic now, so time for yet another mine. Plastic production is skyrocketing now. Good stuff. But somehow our science per minute is going down instead of up. Wait, how is copper wire negative? It looks like we're consuming it faster than we're producing it. I guess there was a leak somewhere? No idea. It eventually fixed itself, but still weird. Actually, never mind. The minus sign was just off the edge of the display. Oh well. I'll place some more labs to increase science consumption. Oh, looks like we made another rocket. Oh, apparently we already launched one with a satellite four hours ago. Still cool though. L is for low density structure. N is for rocket control unit. Might as well reset the copper wire count. There's not really much we can do to fix it at this point. The Spidertron is done, but we're not going to make one. Let's start researching follower robot count since it uses all seven sciences. Military science has gone negative. Time to increase production again. How is copper wire negative again? And why are green circuits so low? No iron? Oh. The new iron mine concentrated all of the iron supply to the top of the base. It became the very thing it was trying to fix. Not really much I can do except crank up production again.
Copper 2. You know, I really couldn't come up with a good way to finish this video. The game was running at about half speed, and I was now a month into this run. I kept increasing production as problems arose, but there really wasn't much I could do. 20 science per minute was still too far out of reach. After another couple hours of trying, the base hit its maximum item capacity, and I finally threw in the towel. After almost 200 hours of in-game time, which is probably closer to 250 hours of real time, we ended up with around 9 science per minute, less than 5% of the original goal. But regardless, playing with sushi does definitely have its upsides. It's super convenient being able to place production wherever you want, and expanding is pretty easy. So for smaller setups, it's definitely worth a shot. And for those of you who want to try this yourself, I've got one key insight for you. Barreling fluids was stupid. Don't do that. It wastes a ton of time, resources, and space. Seriously, don't do it. And luckily for you, playing on the same map for a month straight made me so unbelievably bored that I started coming up with even worse video ideas. So stay tuned for those. As per usual, I'd like to thank my supporters on Kofi. Their contributions helped me fuel the caffeine addiction that this run gave me. And that's all for today. My name's Doc Jade. Bye bye